This is a tutorial for the Unreal Editor 2 for the original Unreal Tournament Game of the Year edition. In this video, we will cover special brushes. If you look on the left hand toolbar here, there's a button called Add Special Brush. And when you click on that, you're going to have a bunch of different options to choose from. I'm going to cover some of these options because I use them a lot and I think you will too. Let's start with Masked Decoration. When you choose Masked Decoration, you will see that there are already going to be some pre-selected choices, Masked and Non-Solid. So the key here is that this is a non-solid brush. This will not affect your gameplay or collide with the player in any way. And just to give you an example, I've got one here, which is like a vine on the wall. And then I have this, which is sort of like a set of dangling wires. And then I created another one just to show you that it's like a, a metal grate of some sort, but you can see through it. So these are all masked decorations. So what you need to do first is grab the texture. In this case, the texture is from GenFX and it's a vines texture. And you can see here that it's masked, two-sided, which means that you can see this texture from either side of it. And that's those are the only two requirements for this texture. And the trick for this is that you take your sheet brush, you make it 256 by 256 or whatever your does it, whatever your map uh, requires and then you now have to make it either on the X if I do the X it's this way if I do it on the Y it's this way and so you can see how this is only a two-sided brush and the next thing you need to do is I'll show you what I did with this map is you've got to zoom in all the way in and down here, change your grid to 1. So now, if you really zoom in all the way, there it is. So the masked decoration really is only a two-dimensional sheet brush with your masked texture. And you have to make sure that it is as close to the wall as you can, which is one unit. So that's like the only time that I recommend you switch the grid size down this low is for this purpose. So if I come over here and look at the other one, same trick. And you can see that it's one unit away. Now, once you're done building and you've put the sheet brush where you want to. If you need to do build other bigger brushes, I recommend you go back to the, a, a larger grid size, but make sure that you take the red brush, which is this one, and reset everything. So reset all of it. Now it's going to go back to the center of your builder room and then you can comfortably switch it back to a larger grid size and you're going to be okay. If you don't do that step, then you may come across a situation where you're trying to build a bigger brush, but it's one unit off the grid and this could create BSP errors uh, and other problems uh, later on. So make sure that when you're changing grid size down to one, reset the whole brush before changing back to a larger grid size. So that's the mass decoration. The next thing I want to show you is I built a little, I mean, this is sort of a makeshift bridge with that texture, which is masked, this one here. It's this same one as this one, which is from Decayed. So I made this bridge and I have that texture, but in the game, if the player tried to walk, they would fall right through because this is a non-solid brush and there's no collision here with the player. So what you need to do, if I just come into here, there, 
Now you see the trick. There's actually a brush that's directly underneath the masked texture. And it's a solid, well, not a solid brush, a semi-solid brush that I just put a, I just put any texture on there. But when you come here to your add special brush button, it's called an invisible collision hull. So you will notice that the invisible collision hull is a semi-solid brush, meaning it's not solid and it's not non-solid either, and it's invisible. And the only way you can see this brush is by turning off your real-time preview, which is the joystick here. See, when you turn that off, you can see that brush. Now, again, I'm going to have to really zoom in so you can see what I've done here. This is that brush. Let me just turn on the joystick. It is that brush. And uh, I cheated a little bit. What you really should do is this semi-solid brush, which is now pink, should really just be one unit off of your other brushes. So the important rule here is that this should not touch other brushes because uh, what will happen is if this touches a solid brush then when you're in the game you may get a hall of mirrors effect and that's not good. So this brush should should have been one unit away from this brush here. So one unit all the way up to here and to here and it's semi-solid and it's invisible and then when the player comes they're going to be able to walk on this bridge and walk right over this mask texture. Okay, so let's take a look at these two items in the game. So when you're in the game, you can't tell that the vine is actually a separate brush from the wall. There's really no way you can see that on here. And so this is really useful if you want to do like signs on the wall or graffiti or other types of decals and things and you can put them on the floor as well like I did over here. You would take this one here and same trick as I showed you, you'd have to put this brush one unit away from the ground without touching. Now let me show you this one. This is the wire texture and the only problem with this one as you can see it's a little bit off and that's the one unit. So when you're doing this type of dangling wires thing it's probably better I mean you wouldn't put it against the wall anyways but it's probably better just to have this dangling from the ceiling and this way the player when they run by they're not going to see that you know that you've moved it this like this one unit off so you'll just have to experiment with the the masked decorations until you get it right i think this one here is pretty good probably it's just a, a little bit off maybe you could change the scale of it and reduce it a bit and now let me show you the bridge So even though this great texture is masked and non-solid, I'm able to walk on it. And if I show you with this, the ripper blades will ricochet off of that. So the player thinks this is solid, but actually it's two different brushes. Now, there is one little glitch that's going to happen if I can get it right. Get it right here. Right there. So, because there is a two unit gap with the invisible, invisible collision hull, you can actually shoot under it. So keep that in mind as well. You probably would want to Number one, tighten it up so it's only one unit away. And number two, maybe just put, extend the bottom part of this brush a little bit so that players cannot exploit that. It really depends on 
the location of this bridge and and where it'll, where it'll be in the game and will it affect gameplay because you certainly don't want players exploiting it. The next thing I want to show you is this. It is a little tiny swimming pool and again you can do it with a uh, zone portal. So you come up here and you'd click on the zone portal. I would for instance because it's a water texture I would uncheck that and make that double sided. So you have zone portal two-sided non-solid and then you would need a texture so this texture is from gen fluid I believe we go to fluids to water yes so you would take a water texture and then put that on top now the only other thing you need to do to make water is obviously you need us these are solid all of these are solid brushes not semi-solid and they're completely encased so there's no leak and then what you do is you again what I did here if I can show you in this view is that portal is just one unit off of the edge of the of the swimming pool and completely covers this hole and how you can check that your zone portal is properly done is by clicking on this little icon which is the zone view all right so this is my builder room and it's all one big zone for now and then when you come inside here it changes color that so that's your proof that you have a perfectly sealed zone in there in your swimming pool all right otherwise you're going to flood the whole place with water so then the last thing you need is this piece so you come up here to the actor browser you go to info which is up here so actor browser info zone info and then water and that's all you need you could you can make it lava or water but in this case I made it water and you just right click and add the zone inside the swimming pool and when you open this up you can change things if you want to so for example you can change the uh, gravity within the water you can change other things as well so let me show you how this looks in the game And another note that uh, you should consider is I made the water really high up here to the edge. You don't want to go too, too low because if you had a deep swimming pool and the player is swimming inside, let's say to get a pickup, then when they try to climb out of the pool, it's a bit difficult. So you always want to get your water level as high as you can towards the edge of your pool so that it's very easy for them to jump out. Now, one unit is extreme, but probably I would say four to eight uh, units max that you want to be off of the edge of your pool. And the next thing here is that you'll notice that this texture is completely static. So let's fix that. And how you fix that is you click on the texture, right click to get its properties. And then here, you can either have it pan um, horizontally or vertically or both so let's just do one and now you have a pan on your texture let's rebuild so now you have some movement on the water